and then we did a demonstration where basically got someone stressed on the stage and we saw their heart rhythms go all over the place and then taught them um, coherence breathing. And I saw in real time this person's heart rhythm shift from like this chaotic pattern where they were stressed and like a high heart rate and then shifted into this lovely ordered sinusoidal pattern very, very quickly, just with a bit of instruction around breathing and, you know, basically recalling something that you were grateful for. And it just leapt out at me and thought, this is good stuff. This is like how you do the theoretical stuff of emotional intelligence and self-regulation, et cetera. So I decided there and then, right, I'm going to, I'm going to practice this. I'm going to buy a gadget. And Mikey just worked for me very, very quickly. If you like breath work, and I think you do because you're watching or listening to this, you're not going to want to miss this episode. So that was the voice a second ago you just heard from Gavin Andrews. And Gavin is the managing director of HeartMath UK and Ireland. And today we're talking about the perfect breath, aka coherence breathing. So it's an episode you will not want to miss if you're into breath work. Now, I've been a bit fascinated with coherence breathing for a while. I love all breath work. You know, I'm a big Wim Hof fan. I also love the take on breathing less than you need. The, the rebirthing stuff fascinates the bejesus out of me and holotropic. And then you've got pranayama and thousands of different ways that we can breathe. And so when somebody calls something the perfect breath, which I've heard in multiple places, it sparks my interest because some breathing exercises can stress you out, other ones can chill you out. But what's going on with this one? Why is it so interesting? And why are there so many claimed health benefits like maxing out your heart rate variability, lowering your blood pressure, being able to connect your heart, body and mind, syncing everything up and all the benefits there. So we're going to get into all this today. So just a quick bit about heart math. So a heart focused breathing meditation that can help you quickly change from feeling stressed to feeling calm. Science-based and used worldwide heart math meditations uses breathing techniques to bring about coherence, the alignment of your physical, mental, and emotional systems to work in sync. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, metronomes when you put them all together on like a wobbly plank, they're all over the place. And then after a while, they, can't do it on the camera, they all start to sync up. And what the hell's going on there? Something called entrainment and our diaphragm and our heart all connected and if we breathe in certain ways it has some wonderful effects so we'll get into that today also gavin uh has given us a 20 percent discount off this this is i'm holding it upside down there we go this is a device that connects to your phone that has an app and you can connect it to your ear and essentially what's going on here is this can detect whether you're in or out of coherence so you can do different breathing exercises on the app and then you can see oh look i can see what's happening to my heart rate i can see what's happening to the coherence very very cool not an affiliate just promoting something for heart math because i think it's a very cool piece of kit so please please check that out um and then just the last bit for me before we get stuck into this beautiful conversation gavin's from the uk uh this was on the solstice so it was about three weeks ago oh i should say um, that this has only got 30 days for the discount. So it's the 8th of July right now. Um, and then we will be taking the discount off on the 7th of August. My maths works. Um, so yeah, so be sure to check that link out as well. Um, if you're new here, then we've also got the Take a Deep Breath channel with over 250 breathing exercises, 130 plus thousand breathers, breathwork ninjas all over there doing different breathing exercises. We've got breathworks from all walks of life. So if you've stumbled across this channel, make sure you go back over there and check the big channel out. Um, and if you listen to this as well, I say hello and please have a listen and have a watch if, you, if you're in the place to do that. Um, talking about breathwork ninjas, uh, what a segue that was. Um, the breathwork ninjas course, level one, my foundation course, the course that took me a year to make that uh, covers all the basics of breathing. We've forgotten how to breathe. We breathe too shallow, we breathe too fast, we don't breathe using the right muscles, we don't breathe using the right holes. And the serious health problems related to this, if we don't use the diaphragm properly, we have digestive and back issues, we don't bring air into the lower part of our lungs, which means that the transfer isn't as efficient as it should be. If we use our mouth instead of our nose, then there's a whole host of problems there. The air's not being cleaned, we're not taking the mold and the toxins out of the air, we're drying the air, and we're stressing ourselves out. And that's just a little touch of some of the problems. We sit down at desks like this in bad posture. We have poor role models. And so when somebody says you've forgotten how to breathe, you think, I've been breathing my entire life. 
do one where actually most of us are breathing poorly and we've got something called dysfunctional breathing. But the thing is, with my Breathwork Ninjas Level 1 course, I take you through a five-week program where step-by-step step, I explain to you the what, the why, and the how, and there's loads of cool from breathing exercises, there's things to download, and my whole goal is to give you the knowledge, but not for you to forget it. After those five weeks, you get to make a sustained change, and the whole thing's risk-free. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you click on that link below, there's a 22% discount for my Breathwork Ninjas Level 1 course get into the program, let me be your breathwork coach, your digital breathwork person, and together we'll go through those breathing exercises. You can ask me questions in the comments. There's different people in there. Thank you so much for all the feedback, wonderful things we've heard from people so far. So come along, be a student, be a breathwork ninja, and learn to breathe the way nature intended. Now that is enough from me. Thank you for being a Breathcast listener. I love you. I'm so happy you're here. I'm grateful that you spend your time listening and like me, learning about breathing. And this is going to be a wonderful episode with Gavin from HeartMath. Take it away. Okay, we are recording a couple of Brits in hot, sweaty offices here in the, the longest day of the year. Happy uh, solstice to you, my friend. Yeah, do you know, I didn't know that. Someone told me earlier today it was a solstice. It was a complete surprise to me. So that explains why it's so lovely and warm and, and yeah. sunny. There we go. And, and, Happy and solstice here we are. to you too. Thank you. I, I, do you know, I don't really do much for the solstice. I really need to think about really? doing something. Maybe go to Stonehenge and do some breath work one year. We well, I'm from near Stonehenge. Stuff. I'll take you oh. down and uh, then we can visit a couple of local hostelries as well. There that, we are. That, that's a verbal contract. That's caught on yeah. camera. So, uh, <laughs> um, so, so uh, thank you so much for coming on here. It's um, We've obviously had a couple of conversations before this, um, Gavin. So uh, really looking forward to getting stuck in, um, talking all things coherence, heart math, resonance, and, and all that good stuff. Um, but if you wouldn't mind, maybe just to kick us off, give people a bit of a taste of who you are what, what's uh what's your kind of background oh blimey well original background is uh, nothing to do with any of this what i used to, used to work in the media i used to work oh, in the newspaper industry so i spent 10 true. years in the newspaper industry L- last place i worked at was the guardian and uh and the whole sort of commercial side of things and then i left that world behind um and i went, oh, went back to university actually and um I, I somehow found myself in this world then through i ended up being a leadership coach and trainer and consultant and uh yeah i kind of got really into all of that but more into self-leadership and actually that's where the heart math thing came in so for me it was through the lens of well how do you you know look after yourself how do you manage yourself how do you lead yourself and how might you put yourself in optimal states to to work mm-hmm. out who you are what you should do with your time and your energy and stuff so um that's a bit of a potted history yeah media industry um a bit of time in academia as well as a lecturer and then a consultant and trainer and then since 2000 and 12 i've been the lucky chap who looks after heart math in the uk and ireland so i, I they're a us business as many people will know if you've heard of us and um yeah I, i'm the lucky guy who looks after the business in the uk and ireland so we sell the products we run training programs um and actually i even get to get out of the uk and ireland as well i was in greece last week so ah. i occasionally get to train in some other bits of europe so oh, that's yeah cool. that's my journey into all of this yeah and that must be quite a different uh life you've got now from the guy working at the guardian yeah i mean they're a lovely company but um you know it's the corporate world and i really can't imagine myself going back into the corporate i mean i work in the corporate world going in and delivering workshops and things but i can't imagine myself living in the corporate world again in fact you know i'm probably unemployable actually (laughs) so (laughs) i better stay out of all of that and i can just go in and and do do my thing every now and again so yeah Yeah. it's a very different lifestyle and I, i wouldn't swap it i love it yeah, oh, that's interesting because um, I spent 15 years working for big corporations, white shirt, trousers every day, running around my laptop and my coffee. I can't imagine going back to that now. That seems like a completely different human that had a completely different life. But I remember, yeah. I, I was, in fact, I was just sent a friend the other day. Things were so busy because I was working in operations that sometimes it'd be 2 p.m. before we had time to go for a wee because it's just running around yeah. from me. To, and just, I just, I was like, that is so different from how things are are going these days but uh an experience that i guess you want to have as well you know it's good to see what these things are like i guess yeah for sure and i you know i think one of the reasons why i enjoy working in the corporate world and why you know i think i do a pretty good job is i know what it's like i've been there so um can yeah. understand what it's what it's like for people and what some of the challenges are yeah definitely well let's talk a bit about heart, heart math then so we had rolling on i think last year 
and people can go back and they can watch that um, podcast as well. But I'm really keen to get your perspective on what it is, what's going on. So just talk to me a little bit. How did you even find out about heart math in the first place? What was the first introduction? Well, yeah, so you've, you've had the mad professor on, so rolling. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he, he heads up all the research for heart math. So I, I, I discovered heart math when I was doing a business master's. So I was, one of the modules was about leadership. And, and one day somebody said, oh, there's this talk you should go to. It's about the physiology of leadership. And I just thought, well, that's, that's a weird title in and of itself. The physiology of leadership. Isn't leadership all about, you know, the brain and kind of bossing people around and telling them what to do and making loads of money. So, um, yeah, so I went along to this presentation and really it was about emotional intelligence. Um, but the guy who was presenting, who's my business partner now, like that Andy Pellin, he, uh, he, he started talking about physiology and how, you know, your emotions and your state and your stress can impact significantly on the physiology and on your brain uh, and how that then can impact your decision making and your behaviours and your thoughts and your feelings and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, hang on, I've been reading all these books about emotional intelligence. On my MBA, I've been writing all of these, you know, essays and things. And I can... I could get a distinction from my essay, but I can't be emotionally intelligent. You know, I consistently do and say stupid things when I get stressed. So yeah. there's this guy talking to me and I thought, I, I like this. It makes a lot of sense. And then he brought out a bit of technology and I was hooked. I was like, well, oh, hang on a minute. Like, this is stuff you can measure as well. Mm. So that was the introduction into the HRV side of things. And then did a demonstration where basically got someone stressed on the stage and we saw their heart rhythms go all over the place. And then taught them um, coherent breathing. Mm. And I saw in real time this person's heart rhythm shift from like this chaotic pattern where they were stressed and like a high heart rate. And then shifted into this lovely ordered sinusoidal pattern very, very quickly, just with a bit of instruction around breathing and, you know, basically recalling something that you were grateful for. And it just leapt out at me and thought, this is good stuff. This is like how you do the theoretical stuff of emotional intelligence and self-regulation, et cetera. So I decided there and then, right, I'm going, to, I'm going to practice this. I'm going to buy a gadget. And Mikey just worked for me very, very quickly. Up until that point, I'd been a real stress head. Um, I was a catastrophizer. You know, I'd make stories up in my head about, you know, things that were going to happen in relationships and stuff like that. And I can remember in the corporate world, you know, going in on the tube and having high heart rate and heart palpitations and sweats and stuff before presentations. And very quickly upon adopting the, the heart math practice, the coherence practice and using the gadget, that dialed down a lot. And I, and I, and I found that, there, you know, I was getting a bit of space where I wasn't getting stressed so often. Um, and so because it worked for me, I kept doing it. And that was really my introduction to it. I wasn't doing anything with it professionally then. <clears throat> I was just using it myself. I noticed my sleep got better. Um, I was noting I was doing a bit of sort of very, very, very amateur triathlon at the time. And I noticed that I was not getting injured as frequently, like muscular aches and pain. So I was thinking, well, something about this is also helping me recover as well. It was keeping me less stressed so I don't damage myself. Um, and then it was quite so I can't remember how long, but it was like a, a year or so before I started to then bring it into um, the training work that I was doing, the coaching and the leadership training. Um, and then I started doing some university lecturing in leadership as well. And I started to bring some of this into alongside the theory as I like, well, this is, this is, this is one way that you can do it. This is how you could be emotionally intelligent very quickly. So yeah, that was, that was the journey. And then from there, it all sort of accelerated and I started to use it much more in the training I was doing. And I got involved in a, in a consultancy that had a heart math license in about 2008 or nine. Um, and then in 2012, HeartMath said to, to me and Andy, would you like to be HeartMath in UK and Ireland? Oh. So he said, go on then. And uh, yeah, I've been doing that since. Oh, wow. Fantastic. And so, yeah, so it's really been a, a journey for you, then, hasn't it? And it's been a good few years. That you, it's not, it's like, you've, what is that, over a decade now then that you've been working yeah, with? So yeah, so I discovered it in 2007. So yeah. what's that, 15, 15 years 16, now yeah. that I've been Oregon. personally practicing it. Yeah, yeah I was personally practicing it a long time before I got yeah. properly involved in the business side of things. Do you, do you think in that time, if you looked at the person, the general personality traits you had before versus now, because you seem like a really affable, kind, calm guy. Do you, I mean, you probably were always that, but do you, would you say that? No, I was complete, you know, a, a monster know. scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> but has anyone ever commented on any changes or have you noticed anything that's, that's happened personality wise? Um, I'm certainly a lot more chilled out than I used to be for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I just don't get as anxious about, things and i don't um you know i don't spend sort of two or three days before a presentation worrying about it 
Um, so part of that's down to the practice, part of that obviously is down to kind of experience and wisdom of age and all those types yeah. of things. But for sure, I'm, you know, I'm certain that my practice has has changed sort of my baseline operating system from one that was pretty chaotic and stressed to one that on the whole is is kind of okay and I you know manage most situations. Sure, I still get stressed. I've been through a stressful situation recently where my wife's not been very well. But what I find is when I'm in those stressful situations, I can kind of modulate it and keep on an even keel, get through it, you know. Yeah. Um, whereas the old me would have just catastrophized the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, I can definitely relate to some of that catastrophizing. Sometimes like the smallest thing will happen and, and, and I have to catch myself and go, bloody hell, you just built a whole doomsday scenario around like yeah, one. Very easy one, to one, do. Really easy. And obviously yeah. it's a great, I guess it's a great survival thing that we needed years ago. But uh, yeah, if we can work our way through it, it's uh, no very good. So could you... Um, for the people that are watching this that maybe have never heard the word coherence before or heart math, can you talk about what, what is coherence breathing and what, what are some of the benefits of it? Okay, well, so, so to start with, in terms of what heart math is, heart math is actually a system. So heart math is a system of breathwork techniques, which is where the coherence breathwork comes in. But in addition to that, you've got an aspect to it, which is um, about uh, interoception, so focusing into your body, but particularly focusing into the heart. So... You know, a lot of people have never really spent any time noticing what's going on below here. Um, we're particularly interested in the benefits of nurturing uh, an awareness of your heart. So that's kind of like a physical awareness or interoception of what the heart is doing, how it's feeling, you know, what it's, how it's behaving. But also sort of metaphorically a, a connection to your heart in terms of, you know, the information that your heart might be able to give you, or how you might be able to live your life from the heart a bit more. So there's... There's a heart aspect to it. There's then a self-regulation aspect to it. So once you can get coherent, basically, it enables you to get prefrontal cortex back online. So then you can self-regulate in terms of your emotions and feelings, which then enables you to self-regulate your thoughts much more effectively as well. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then, then regulate your behaviors. So basically, it just means that you can be more in charge of yourself, which you can't be when you're stressed. So there's the self-regulation piece. And we've got techniques that enable you to do things like solve problems or communicate more effectively or like plan a project, for example. So this is a kind of doing aspect to the heart math techniques. And then the bit that most people are aware of or what most people think heart math is, is the biofeedback technology. Mm -hmm. So the biofeedback is, is, is actually just giving you feedback on your ability to get coherent. So that is the bit that enables you to practice to First of all, it validates that you can get coherent. Most people can. Um, and then it is like a training tool. So it's like taking your coherence to the gym, you know, every day if you practice with your, your inner balance or your own way pro, then what you're doing is you're making sure that you're giving your coherence a, a workout, you're strengthening the muscle, and then that means that it's available to you, you know, when you really need it. So the biofeedback, um, you know, it's not an essential part of the system, actually. Um, because the techniques are the important part of it. And heart math existed before the technology was even around, before we even knew that you could measure this state that people seem to be able to get themselves into. Um, but for many people, the technology is, is really helpful because the biofeedback builds that awareness of, okay, well, when I breathe like this, or I make this small adjustments, so or I deepen, or I smooth it a bit more, or I release tension elsewhere in my body, you're getting the instant biofeedback on that. And then that's showing up in, you know, either higher or lower levels of, of coherence. So it just enables you over time to sort of work out your sweet spot, what works for you. And then once you've done that, it basically sustains the habit. So for me, I'm kind of addicted to doing 20 minutes a day on my inner balance. And on the rare occasion I don't do it, I feel bad. <laughs> so that, so I double down the next day. Yeah. Um, but it's just a nice way to, to kind of like keep the practice going and keep the habit there. Yeah. No, that's what that's... heart math is. Um, in terms of coherence, so co coherence is a is a is a state. Um, it's actually called psychophysiological coherence in the in the science because it's it's physiological and it's also psychological. But what you're doing is you're using uh, the power of the breath to bring the autonomic nervous system into balance. So you're balancing, you're syncing up the, the the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Um, and once you do that, that then is reflected in the heart rhythm. So they're going to this lovely ordered pattern. And on our technology, you can see this lovely rolling sinusoidal waveform that you can create. And then if you imagine 
that the heart is the largest rhythm maker in the body, what happens when the heart goes into that rhythm is all the other systems kind of synchronize with it. Um, and so everything's operating in this lovely, like efficient state, all of the kind of energy in your body is being, you know, optimally utilized. You're naturally going into homeostasis. Um, the benefit on the brain is that when you're in that state, the heart's tapping at this lovely ordered rhythm, the brain in effect goes, oh, well, there's this lovely ordered stability coming back at me from the body and the heart, so I must be safe. So that then enables the, the prefrontal cortex to, to, to activate, um, which then enables you to do all the stuff the prefrontal cortex can do, like, you know, not doing, say, stupid things, <laughs> you know, solve sophisticated problems, communicate with people in, in you know, sophisticated, complex ways, uh, that, that type of thing. So it, it's that aspect of it that is, you know, when we're stressed, yeah, it's the stress that's driving us. It's driving what we're thinking and what we're, we're saying and what we're doing. Mm. Whereas if we can recognize, oh, I'm stressed, then you can do these techniques very quickly, get yourself out of stress, back into the prefrontal cortex, um, and then you're much more in control of yourself. So co coherence is the state that basically you put yourself into. And the, the benefit is that you're, you're more in control. And it's good for your physical health. It's good for your mental health. It's good for your emotional health. And, and I'd say as well that it's, it's good for the spiritual or existential part of you as well because you can kind of reflect on those you know big important questions in life that are very hard to do when you stress oh that's a great explanation and, and so because coherence is quite a new word to me in my vocabulary if could you describe it is there like another way is it like are we in sync are we in rhythm is there a different way of saying it as well yeah so so okay a couple of definitions so in physics coherence is basically ordered patterning within a system so a right. system goes into this lovely ordered pattern of repeating cycles so the heart's a system and that's what it's doing it's going into this coherence um or cross coherence is when you have systems that then entrain so you've probably seen on the internet like videos of metronomes that are all going at different speeds you've seen those yeah. yes yeah. okay so as long as they're on a base that isn't solid they will eventually sync up. So they sync up to the same rhythm. So that, that is coherence, it's resonance, but it's that is coherence. And in our bodies, when we're coherent, a similar thing happens. Everything syncs up to that same rhythm. Mm -hmm. And that rhythm is, is optimally efficient and effective. And so it really is the, an optimal state for us to be in. Not, not for everything in life, not when we're running for buses, you know, stuff like that. But for, for actually, you know, as you're sat there listening to me talk, actually, it would be an optimal state. Or, you know, you're sat in a, a meeting or a presentation or you're trying to come up with an idea for something. Um, yeah, it is an optimal state. So, so, that, so that's what, what coherence is. And uh, more and more, it's becoming a term that, that people are hearing because what we realize what we recognize is that it's it's an important state for, state for us all to be in so it's not quite as simple as just you know making sure you get relaxation what we know now is that you also need enough coherence or synchronization as well as relaxation and it is actually a separate state which is so in terms of the autonomic nervous system you know you've got the sympathetic the fight and flight and you've got the parasympathetic the, the rest and digest coherence is actually inputs from both systems so they're they kind of on and off in synchronization as opposed to one being dominant or them being antagonistic with each other as they are when you're stressed yeah okay oh that's fair and and so uh this for me in the most simple terms is the heart then dictates what the brain waves are doing is that right and then the two kind yeah. of sync up i might, might be saying it too exactly yeah. no that is that is exactly what's going on so mm -hmm. the the breathing and the heart rhythms the the brain then synchronizes to those and in effect you know if you put some neurofeedback on someone when they were practicing, you'd see them generally go into a high alpha brainwave right. state. Yeah. Mm. So, so that's, that's what's going on. Like everything's kind of been, is following that rhythm from the, the heart. That's so cool, isn't it? Do, do you, I keep, I mean, I'm hearing obviously, I mean, we're in the breath world. So I guess our, our view is already quite niche, but I'm, I'm hearing a lot of things that this is all very well could be considered the breathing technique, you know, the one breathing technique to rule them all, um, so to speak. <laughs> well, look, I mean, I, you know, I think of breath work as like exercise and you do different types of breath work, you yeah. know, to, to strengthen or activate different things or achieve different ends, basically. Um, 
but i would venture that yeah if there's one technique that is more appropriate for most of the time you know those times when you're just kind of being you then i'd su suggest that coherence breathing or what some people might call resonance breathing as well is is optimal for that yeah yeah, you know, yeah. the more that you can do that we could just strip it right back to kind of like you know relatively slow deep paced breathing um if you can get if you can build an unconscious habit of that that's basically just going to keep you ticking over very nicely mm. in a very efficient way and you're going to make it so much easier for your body and your autonomic nervous system to look after itself yeah yeah, yeah. do you um, what, what are your thoughts on because I, I, a lot of things, you know, you read certain books and you hear things and everyone seems to talk about hunter-gatherers. Hunter-gatherers did this. Hunter-gatherers, you know, we live by the sea and we've got daylight and blah, blah, blah. Do you think that we've always had this and we used to use this naturally? Or do you think it's something we've discovered recently? Are there any, I think there might be in James Ness's book, actually, but are there any references to this being quite an old technique? Or is it something fairly new? Oh, well, for sure. No, for sure. The technique is, is ancient. I mean, actually, when we look at things like um, certain types of prayer, uh, chanting, you know, hymns, uh, certain types of poetry, they tend to put people into a, a cycle where um, they tend to be in roughly kind of like a 10 second cycle or equal in out breathing cycle as well. So this stuff is certainly not new. I mean, we've been breathing forever. I'd also say that the coherence is a natural state. So almost certainly in our prehistory, when we weren't, you know, rushing around doing things all the time, or we weren't so like cognitively engaged all the time, we would just be kind of coherent, you know, for large parts of the day. Some interesting research coming out around sleep that's showing as well that coherence um, should be showing up in our sleep. Really? And, and, and yeah, and that if it doesn't happen, happen, then that can cause some health problems. Even if it appears that you're getting more than enough parasympathetic, you know, the rest and renewal and recuperation part of us, if there's not coherence showing up as well, then that appears to be detrimental. So some interesting research around... Um, shift workers who appear to be getting more than enough parasympathetic recovery but we know that they're more likely to to get ill as a result of you know being out of their circadian rhythms and one of the things that they don't seem to have compared to night sleepers is enough coherence showing up mm -hmm. so i think yeah we just created a world where you know well we you know we, we created a world where we breathe less optimally anyway and i think we created a world where we're experiencing less naturally occurring coherence that's really interesting so so uh, is that i mean obviously we can dig up the study and have a look at that another time but i'm just curious if they said like at certain uh levels of sleep you're meant to get it or is it just throughout so i don't know if you'll know that because it's not your study i have no idea no. I, I, I'm, I'm a bit of an abstract so, reader so yeah no i need to have a look at that that's that's fascinating yeah, i could send you the paper yeah, yeah. yes please stuff, um yeah. yeah and we can link it actually if people want to have a look at that because yeah i'm a bit, bit of a nerd when it comes to sleep as well because uh, I like a bit of the old mouth tape before bed, and uh, now I'm thinking, oh, I need to need to have a little the music on in the background so I can hear the bongs while I'm sleeping. I'm joking, obviously, but uh, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. There might, there might be something to that. There might there be, some, be sort of, uh, yeah. some sort of some sort of sleeping be. Uh, coherence. That there you go. We there can we can be. patent that. Um, so this state then is it? So is it five seconds? Five point five seconds? People tell well, me that there's a unique one. Well, yeah. look, I mean, look, we're all different. The way I, look, I view humans is that we, you know, we all got our own kind of like frequency and uh, we've got our own thing. We're unique. Generally, a five second in, five second out of 10 second cycle, you know, gets a lot of people pretty, pretty coherent. Yeah. But we've all got our own specific resonant frequency. So for some people, it might be in an 11 second cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I seem to, to find a 12 and a half second cycle optimal for me to get highest levels mm -hmm. of coherence. But actually, having said that, for me, it also changes throughout the day. So I think, you know, there's no one size fits all. And, and I don't actually, from my own personal experience, I don't think there's even a one size fits all for one person it is dictated by what's going on throughout the day and if you think about things like circadian rhythms as well um, then that would make sense that you might have a slightly different optimal coherence frequency or resonance frequency at different times of the day yeah yeah but look you know if you're breathing somewhere between a 10 second cycle and a 12 second cycle it's going to be doing you good yeah yeah and, and just for people listening this is typically correct me if I'm wrong through the nose and, absolutely in and out through the nose yeah. and what in terms of um volume uh and pace because obviously you can go yeah 
what, 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 what does it look like? Is it very gentle? Are you go 50% capacity? What, what, so again, we're, we're not massively prescriptive on this. We, okay. we tend to say to people like breathe a bit slower and deeper than you normally do. Okay. Make sure it's comfortable. Yeah, comfortable. So, yeah. and again, I think for us, we're we're we heart math. We're we're less concerned about being very prescriptive with people and more about helping them find something that's comfortable for them mm. um, and that they can sustain. Because chances are, you know, even if it's not a hundred percent optimal, it's going to be somewhere in a good place. That, you know, whether it's eighty percent or hundred percent at the end of the day, really, yeah. you know, who yeah. cares? Just find something that's comfortable that works for you. You can use the biofeedback to check. You know and refine that you might over time be able to retrain yourself to something that's more optimal through through the, the biofeedback as well um but yeah we're not really about you know sp- specifying exact depths and, and things like things yeah. like that so no that's good i like that as well because it is taking a bit of a yeah because sometimes you can be too prescriptive and then you get a bit stressed that you're not doing it right and it can be a bit bit negative so here, yeah. here's one for you i've only started dabbling so i want to talk to you in a second about i'm going to get the gadget out of the drawer in a second and we can talk a bit yeah. about that and, and a little challenge <clears> i want to put on myself but um so i've been playing with coherence just just ever slightly over the last week or so and i'll just do just sort of 10 15 minutes of, of five 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 um mm-hmm. and what i noticed i'll do a uh, a breath hold just afterwards because I'm trying, I'm going on a free dive and retreating uh, probably where you've just been. I'm just going off, I'm off to Corfu in a couple of weeks. Oh, so uh, yeah. my, my breath holds are, are sh- I've, I've always been really bad. I've always struggled to hold my breath uh, and I'm not talking the old Wim Hof here where you go crazy and then you can hold it for three minutes. I'm talking right now, let's just empty our lungs and hold our breaths, um, which is kind of the oxygen advantage style yeah. of, of doing yeah, it. Yeah. Um, but with doing coherence the other day, I, I did it for like 10 minutes max. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I just breathed out normally and I held my breath for 90 seconds on empty lungs, which is 50% more than I've ever done it in the past. Wow. So any idea what's going on there? Is that because I'm in parasympathetic, I'm relaxed? What, any uh, I think it's, it's probably more to do with uh, the CO2 homeostasis. So just breathing in that way means much more effective CO2 homeostasis. So you, because you don't have so much CO2 in your system, that's not causing you too many problems that's what i would surmise from that okay. yeah um, i was wondering if there's a coherence aspect here where i'm i'm just in the zone and i'm because i'm not because it's stress well, for me that makes me breathe when i'm holding well, look, so, so certainly you know just as a result of the coherence practice you you'll have dialed down all the stress you'll be feeling calm but yes. you'll be feeling alert mm-hmm. so that's one of the other things with this breathing pattern is it, it doesn't make you too sleepy headed yeah. it makes you feel alert but calm so that will be a benefit because you're not you know operating off a stressy baseline thinking i'm going to try and hold my breath again and i can't do it for very long those thoughts have probably disappeared a, a yeah. bit as well yeah. um yeah so you probably just raised the baseline tolerance a bit in terms of both the co2 and your general stressiness around breath holds yeah and, and it's interesting because it's the exact opposite if, if you go on youtube and look at people that are doing breath holds that it's all about wim hof hyperventilate blow mm. off as much co2 as you possible and then like hold your breath and so it was really interesting to go oh there's a different way to do this you can slow your mm. breathing down and then hold your breath off the back of it as well but i just found it yeah fascinating so mm. uh, i'm seeing what else we can do right i'm gonna just dig out the box i should have done this before we hit record so i might have to cut this bit out just give me 10 seconds i'm gonna dig out the gadget yeah. in the box I'll, and I'll, I'll wave a box around while you're doing that here's a here's a heart map box I'm the box is in here. Oh, oh it's at the top thank god otherwise that would have been the gadgets elsewhere because we've got a long extension there. So the gadget that you've got, yeah, is the um we sent you the inner balance, didn't we? And you've got one yes. of the wired ones, yeah, yes. for, for Android. Yeah. So so we got a few of those. They're called inner balances because they create inner balance. And there's a Bluetooth version that works with Apple and Android, and then there's a wired version if you don't want Bluetooth for Apple, and there's a wired version for Android, which is yeah. what you've got, Mike. So it literally just plugs into the the bottom of the um to the smartphone like to the yeah. smartphone yeah plugs in there, and then that that ear sensor that's um that's called a photoplethysmograph. It takes a lot of practicing mm. to say that it's an infrared sensor basically, and so what it's doing is it's measuring um that one measures two hundred and fifty times a second the density of the blood and the capillaries of the earlobe. So that mm. um based on how much blood there is we know whether the, the heart's beating or not so basically it's quite very simple it's like saying can i see red i.e the capillaries are full or, mm-hmm. or can i see light pink they're, they're empty uh, it's a bit more sophisticated than that but then it's working out the heart's rhythm from that so 250 times a second it's doing that and so making a calculation sends it to the 
to the sensor, which performs a, a clever algorithm. And then it begins to work out the, uh, the frequencies of the cycles. And then it can calculate how coherent you are or not. Mm. So it's, very, it's actually a very simple device. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just providing you feedback on what your heart rhythms are doing. And then it turns it into visual information for you and also gives you different data points and things. Mm. And is there something here where when you breathe out with coherence, is there like a rush of blood or something like that? Is it something to do with the diaphragm pumping the heart? Is that something? Well, no, so what is, well, so it's, it's measuring the blood pressure. So basically when you get the ventricular contraction, you send a pressure wave, you know, and so mm. it's, it's actually measuring the, the, the pressure wave. That's, the it, pressure that's actually wave. what's going on. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah, not measuring, which it's will not be measuring... impacted by everything else, but it's, okay. no, it's the pressure wave in the okay. In the so it's not the heartbeat it's looking for in the ear. Or it's not like an it? elect. Well, it is, but it's a proxy. So if oh, you, if it was electronic, it'd be measuring the actual electrical, like an ECG. You know, measures mm. the electrical signal. Mm. This isn't measuring the electrical signal. It's, it's measuring the the density of the blood. It's a pressure wave, mm. basically, that okay. it's measuring, and then, but that correlates like 95 percent with an ecg so although it's not electrical we can actually recreate like the ecg from the information that we're getting from the the, the infrared sensor yeah oh very yeah. cool so so my plan is to is to do a 30 day because like i said i've only dabbled with coherence i've done it a couple of times but i've not measured anything so i'm just any advice you know best time of day to do it you mentioned 20 minutes earlier is that optimal if you could just give some advice on if i want to do this to start to see yeah some so so we say as, as, as bare minimum five minutes three times a day my personal belief and the evidence that i see when i work with people is that 20 minutes a day in one go is optimal and that's really going to retrain your nervous system. It's really going to hardwire the, the tech in, technique in for you as well. Yeah. Um, you, you're going to notice uh, more changes in your kind of like general stress responses. You might even get people saying to you, oh, Mike, you're a bit different today. You know, <laughs> what's going on? What have you changed? Well, you've been drinking so, again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'd say if you want to really get the most out of it, then 20 minutes a day is optimal. Okay. In terms of time of day, Actually, again, everyone's a bit different. For me, when I wake up, I'm not going to get my highest coherence scores. Right. And, you know, I, you know I, I can feel the cortisol in my system when, I, when I've woken up. You know, my heart rate's like 10, 10 beats higher than normal when I wake up. Yeah. So then I need to get through to around about sort of 11 a.m. Then I can get a high score. Then go through straight after lunch. I'm not going to get a high score again, you know, mm. um, it's good just eating something, messing mm. with the autonomic nervous system. It's doing what it needs to do. But then by about 3 p.m. again, I can, I can get a high score. Typically for me, I like to practice anywhere between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. If I leave it late in 10 p.m., I fall asleep when I'm doing it and it buggers up my high school. So yeah. <laughs> if you want to get a high school, don't do it late at night because don't do it late one of the things that coherence does is it lets your body do what it really needs to do next. And you get all that information from the body about what it really needs. So if you're tired, typically you can find for the first five minutes or so, you get a very high level of coherence. And then the body's got into balance, then it wants to go into deep parasympathetic. So you'll yeah. start drifting off. So we hear a lot of people say, oh, when I start doing the coherence practice, I notice my sleep got better. Mm -hmm. Your body knows what's, what it needs to do next and it's re exactly. more relaxed. Okay. It's, yeah, it's going into it from a place of balance as opposed to activation. So if you've been watching, you know, Game of Thrones and people lopping limbs off, you're all yeah. highly excited emotionally yeah. and you try to go to sleep, it's going to be difficult. Whereas if yeah. you spend a bit of time practicing coherence you're probably going to go to sleep a bit bit quicker yeah in, in a different life i used to play call of duty online about <laughs> in about 2008 i had no idea about blue light and stress you know this is like yeah. this is years ago and i remember trying to go to bed and i've been shouting at the screen for like four hours and just in bed like i don't think i can play call of duty at 11 p.m at night anymore but uh yeah so yeah don't yeah, you'd be wired you'd be full of adrenaline full, full of, of it you're yeah. running around some people are trying to kill you um so with this then, so one thing I've noticed when I'm doing a bit of coherence breathing is after about eight or 10 minutes, my mind starts to wander. Yeah. Now, is it a bit of grin and bear it and keep pushing through to 20? Or is, it, is that a time when you kind of stop and then just keep practicing? No, no so again, with our practice, um, I mean, ideally, we want people to be able to practice coherence when they're doing stuff. That's where we want to get to. So in the moment, eyes open, you should be able to practice coherence. Mm. So all it is really is kind of like a, well, the basics is just the, the breathing anyway, what we call heart focused breathing, mm. where we want to go to as soon as possible, really from the heart focused breathing is into 
some sort of positive emotion. So for quick coherence technique, for example, you're just going to be re recalling like, you know, someone or something for which you feel genuine care or appreciation or gratitude. So appreciation, gratitude, love, care, those types of things you can try and feel those feelings. Yeah. Then that's what we want to do. But they're going to be fleeting. They're going to be in and out. Your mind's going to wander. We're not looking for empty mind or anything mm. like that. We are actually looking to experience a positive, pleasant elevating feeling or emotion that's actually what we want right. and so yeah and, and that's a, again that's like a muscle not, people are not used to being able to choose emotions but most people think emotions are just reactions which they are but they're also choices and so part of this practice is about exercising your choice around gratitude appreciation love care etc which also has additional physiological benefits mm -hmm. so you'll start to release dhea the vitality hormone you tap into those types of feelings <clears throat> if you're really able to kind of tap into to love for someone um you're going to start releasing some oxytocin probably as well so you kind of like a dance mike you know you, mm. you do the breathing you you connect to the feeling the feeling might be fleeting it disappears again you start thinking about what you can have for dinner that's fine you know come back to the breathing again then try and bring the feeling back in again and uh, i can't do 20 minutes of feeling you know uninterrupted Mm. appreciation love and gratitude it, it, it's in and out so yeah. again we don't we don't we don't want to give people like a bar that's too high to try and hit you know yeah at, at the very least even if you can't connect with the feelings just 20 minutes of the coherence breathing is going to do you good so it is what it is you know if we can't connect with the feeling on a on, on one day we're going to give ourselves a hard time about it yeah it's um for, for me again i've only been dabbling with it recently but it's like ah this might be the thing i was looking for because you know so, sometimes like I need to do some breath work then he's going to do some separate meditation then he's you know and that's actually this kind of feels like it ticks quite a few boxes for me it's got it's my meditation and breath work all rolled into one and i feel yeah. like the slower breathing is also ticking a few of those um as we spoke about on a different conversation, functional breathing elements, because I'm slowing my breath down. I'm no longer breathing at the 15 to 18 breaths a minute that people tend to be breathing that today. We've brought it right down. So I'm yeah. getting all the benefits of, of the functional side, I think as well. Or some yeah. of them. For sure. For sure. And, and then also what you, what you can do within your practice as well is you could decide that you're going to use the state, the optimal state of coherence to engage with something to like, like a, like a problem or something like that. So mm -hmm. I mean, look, we, we could give it a go if you want. Why don't we? Why don't oh, we yeah. I'll tell you what yeah. we could do. We could, in effect, I could teach three techniques in one. Okay. We could just do some heart focused breathing. We'll go then into a quick coherence. And then what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll move into a, what we call a freeze frame. Okay. okay? But for, for the first thing, though, um, so everyone who's, who's watching can do this as well. I just want you to, to like recall something you've got on, going on at the moment that is, it's like really challenging. It's, it's causing you too much pressure. It's, it's stressing you, frustrating you, irritating you. It's like it can be anything, you know, anything to do with work or life relationship. It really doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. So it looks like you've got something already, Mike. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but most people have. So, so we need something to work on, basically. Okay. So we're going to do what's called a freeze frame on that issue. But before we do again, I'll just, just kind of connect with any... When you, when you think about that thing, situation, event, person, relationship, whatever it is, um, just notice like any attitudes that you've got about it or any sort of thoughts and feelings you might be having about it um, or even anything physical, like you know, physical sensations like a, a tension or um, the butterflies in the tummy or a, a, anything like that. So the idea is that we just want to get some awareness around what this situation is doing to us when we come at it from a normal perspective which is a bit of a stressy perspective okay so what i'm going to do is uh, when we finish the technique i'm just going to ask you to reflect on that those attitudes and feelings and thoughts and stuff and then to reflect on after the practice what the difference might be if any okay cool all right so we'll start off with what we call heart focused breathing very very simple we like simple names in heart math so just get comfortable and uh, we just basically drop our awareness, our focus down into the, the heart area or just the kind of general chest area. It doesn't have to be technically directly in the physical heart, but it's generally the heart of the chest area. So we've got our focus on our awareness there. It can help to put your hand there. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to start breathing nice and deeply and comfortably. Just take a few nice, deep, comfortable breaths.
And now what we're going to do is we're just going to imagine that our breath is flowing into and flowing out of our heart or our chest area. So we're imagining that. We're keeping our bellies nice and relaxed. So we should feel our bellies rising and falling as we're breathing. We're also breathing through our noses. So it's just a sort of gentle imagination or gentle awareness of the breath flowing into and out of the heart or the chest. I'm just going to do that for about a minute. Okay, so now what I'd like to invite you to do is just to recall someone or something for which you feel genuine care, appreciation, or gratitude. And it doesn't matter what it is, be a person or a place or a memory, pet, anything at all just needs to be genuine feeling of care, appreciation, or gratitude. And then when you have that feeling of care, appreciation or gratitude, just gently breathe that in and out with each breath, keeping the focus in the heart. We're going to do that for another minute. Okay, so now from this more objective place, I just want you to gently ask yourself, what would be a more efficient or effective action, attitude or solution with respect to the initial situation? So what would be a more efficient or effective action, attitude or solution? And just keep the breathing flowing, keep the feeling going as well. And again, gently just one more time. Well, what would be a more efficient or effective attitude, action or solution? And now just quietly observe any subtle changes that you might have in your perceptions or your attitudes, or your feelings about the situation. And like, I don't, need to know the uh, the story behind all of this but i'm just interested to know from what was your previous perspective on the situation the attitudes the thoughts the feelings anything like that what was what was going on beforehand 
Good, good. Uh, by the way, I just reminded, just that was a lovely reminder, just to take some time out during the day because I'll do my breath work in the morning and then I'm just go, 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 go to a bed. And I was just like, oh, this is really lovely to take some time out at 7 p.m. Um, so, yeah, I've got a, 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 without going into too much detail, I've got a really big project at the minute and it's got so many moving parts and it just, all my stomach just locks up whenever I think about it and I just procrastinate on it. And so um, at the end of that, after the, kind of the gratitude thing i was like just need to get started it's just it's mm. just it's just moving one step after another and actually it's quite simple if you just start moving but i've just yeah. every week i'm like ah, i'll do that later and then it just never gets done so um yeah there was just there was a lovely clarity there uh, and just almost a relaxing of the tension going just just do it just get started yeah. man it's not gonna be perfect so uh yeah very very interesting Good. so that, that so that's really what harmoth is all about it's like simple practical tools that don't take very long where you can switch from a, a like a stress perspective that is confusing you and you're not making a decision um it's actually draining you as well energetically from that perspective but very quickly if we get coherent and then we get the positive feelings flow and we get the prefrontal cortex back online. Then all of a sudden the perspective changes and it's like, you know, it's just, I just need to get on with it. And I'll, I'll, I know that if I do, I'll find some traction. And so that, there's a lot more ease and flow about that, mm. which is where we want to get to, because actually throughout our days, you know, we're coming up against stuff all the time, there's stresses, there's problems, there's tensions, there's, oh, I don't want to do this. And, and we want to try and create more ease and flow. And that's what coherence is. If you think about it, it's flow. Right. Yeah. And we can then use that state to navigate the complexities of what we're going on. And I mean, it could be that, you know, some, sometimes even when we do this technique, people, they, they come up with some sort of an answer, like a solution and epiphany. You can't promise that every time. But even if it's just the more subtle, uh, you know, I'm building this up to something bigger than it is. And I know that if I just get on with it, it's going to flow. That's all good stuff. Yeah. yeah. So that's how, how coherence can just benefit you in your day to day. It's four minute technique, you know. But a lot of people just kind of sit there like, oh, I've got this problem. I don't know how to solve yeah. it. You know, you won't solve it from that place. No. You've got to shift state. Yeah, keep banging your head against that brick wall and I will find <laughs> an answer. It's like, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But we somehow still think, let's just keep, if I just work a bit harder, if I just push myself a little bit more. Um, I have to say the whole, um, it's so simple yet so powerful, the whole gratitude piece. Yeah. Uh, and for me recently, this and it, this morning was the first time it happened. I did my, my coherence this morning. Just um, I was just scanning through like different faces of people in my life, different people, mm. you know, parents, my friends, you know, my partner, and then just landed on my grandma who was sadly not with us anymore. Mm. And boom, there was just this moment of, ah, and then even mm. then I was just able to go back to all these lovely childhood memories that I've not thought about for 30 yeah. years. So and it just yeah. feel, feel lovely off the back of it. So super powerful. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's, that's something that we can all do because before most people, they don't recognize that emotions are choices. Most people, we just go through life, you know, reacting or we put our, we put our focus, unfortunately on negative things, yeah. um, but we can choose emotions. And so it's just about exercising that choice a bit more frequently. And it has amazing health benefits. I mean, there's a ton of research around gratitude. We, we know it has health benefits. When you're doing this in addition to coherence, you know, it really is good for you. Yeah. So we, we should all be doing it more frequently throughout our days as well, because we, a lot of people are getting very out of balance during the days. And when mm. they're trying to catch up with their sleep at night, mm. we can actually kind of modulate flow with our days with a lot more ease if we're more intentional about recognizing when we're stressed and then using these simple techniques to navigate yeah that's very cool so I'm, I'm very keen to talk about your beautiful breathing app uh centropy but before we do um i think we've got a bit of a we can talk about a bit of an offer we can uh link people into yeah. if they want to yeah uh, yeah yeah of these absolutely so um yeah we'll do a, a 20 percent discount so all people need to do is just use the code breathe no not breathe breath not breathe breath 20 okay breath, breath 20. 20 we'll okay. put that in all the info um that will only work on the uk store i'm afraid uh, but i think most of your viewers are, are uk um but yeah breath 20 and that's a 20 percent discount off of any of the products so fantastic we yeah we do we do have a chunk of us people out there hello to the us as well you well have i will to... have a word then with my us okay. colleagues and we'll, yeah. i'll try my very best to get them to, to create the same code fantastic okay? yeah and we can we can that. we can pop that and, and, and we'll put the links down below yeah i think about 30 percent of the audience is from the states so it's okay like, I'll, I'll make it i'll make it happen don't worry okay yeah wonderful and so i'm going to be doing the 30-day uh uh 
not trial, that's not the right word, but a bit, bit of a challenge myself to make sure I do it every day um, without yeah. forcing myself, because you've taught yeah. me now not to be too strict on myself. I just need to have some fun with it. But um, yeah, I want to start creating a bit of a daily ritual around some of this. And then the beautiful thing is I can track it now and see what's uh, what's going on. So I'll, uh, I'll be sharing some of that online. If people are cool. interested and want to join me. Um, cool. Okay. So yeah, so that's hot. Anything else on hot math you want to talk about before we, we move on? Uh, no, I think that's all good. I mean, if people are interested in research, then um, they can look at the HeartMath Institute's website, which has got a lot of research papers on as well. But uh, yeah, I think we covered covered the basics. I could talk forever about HeartMath. Yeah, so I, I'd love to hear. Covered well, what, what, why HeartMath? What, what, what's that? Why, why math? Well, a couple of reasons for that. So, so one is because what the heart is doing is it can be explained mathematically. Right. Okay. So that's to do with kind of the frequencies and the rhythms. So there is maths to what the heart's doing. It can be measured and, and we can influence that as well. Um, one of the other reasons that apparently is that the, the US guys uh, wanted a name that they felt kind of was both masculine and feminine, a bit yin and yang. And so mm. kind of the heart and the math oh, um, ideally is uh, designed to appeal to, to both. I don't know. I mean, th- there we are. Yeah, and 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 over here we would say hot maths probably, wouldn't we? We, we would say, say maths. maths. Yeah, we say maths. We say maths. <laughs> maths yeah. for the plural. Um, I think uh, I saw. I'm sure I saw that a while ago. Tony Robbins was using some hot math stuff. Mm. I don't know if you've come across that. He seems to be a big big fan of hot math stuff. Tony Robbins uses our stuff, yeah, and some of the other big names like Joe Dispenza, Craig Baden, oh, yeah. uh, Bruce Lipton's a, a a big fan. Um, so yeah, we're very lucky in that there's a number of those science meets personal development meets spirituality gurus who are fans of heart math. And we're very lucky because they, they talk about our research. I mean, it kind of validates a lot of what they're yeah, saying anyway, yeah, the benefit yeah. to them. Of course, but we're, yeah. We're, we're very fortunate. Um, yeah. Joe Dispenza probably the biggest biggest fan of all the heart. We do research with him. That's amazing. Yeah, he's obviously big into all that lovely gratitude side of things as well. Mm-hmm. Isn't he? That's his that's his deal. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. So yeah. So everybody, links down below. Um, have a look at the Heart Math website. Check out the the podcast. Also, we're rolling. Uh, we'll link all of that. So if you want to go deeper down the Heart Math trail, you can do. Um, and now let's talk about your beautiful app, Syntropy. So what is Syntropy? What does the word mean? First of all, does it mean? Well, so yes. Yeah, so Syntropy is another word. That that you're going to hear more of um syntropy is the opposite of entropy so entropy is actually the emergence of order and symmetry and complexity out of chaos mm. so actually syntropy is like a force of nature if you think of like the most in- incredible you know flowers and trees grow from a single seed or you know an incredibly sophisticated human um grows from a you know a, a sperm and an egg you know yeah. that that really is is what syntropy is all about so science tends to talk more about entropy because you can Mm. measure it more easily that's about you know stuff decaying and rotting and being destroyed dying (laughs) um but yes entropy is um order from chaos basically which is which is why we chose the name for for the app well, that's very cool. I've not, why have I never heard of that before? Because yeah, I always hear about um, entropy and the universe yeah. is going to, you know, uh, this thing about the universe just breaking apart and everything will just be open and there'll be no light and you hear all this doom and gloom. But that, yeah, yeah. that's the, that's okay. Well, equal uh, forces, equal forces. Yeah, so the entropy comes first and then it evolves. Well, like it's never middle. ending cycles of entropy ah, and entropy, you know, okay. life and death. You know, yeah. It's like any of the, the rhythms, okay. the polarities that, yeah. that exist. So night and day, male very and female. Cool. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, and, and what's control. the what's the ethos of, of 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 this for you? What is it? Is it so syn- or, or something else? Yeah. Well. So uh, yeah. So syntropy. Um, syntropy is a, is a lockdown like side hustle that has turned into a real business. And as if I wasn't busy enough as it as it was. So yeah, I have um, two business partners. Ali, she's an artist. Mark's a musician. And um, for some time, I'd been really interested in how we make coherence easy and accessible for people. And, you know, to be frank, the, the sensors are not cheap. And so they're not available to everybody. You, you need to have a disposable income to afford them. Mm. Um, and I'm also very passionate about the power of art and music to help people shift their state. So, you know, think about it. We often consume art and music in, intentionally to, to, to do something with our emotions, to make ourselves happy with comedy or scare ourselves witness with horror or whatever. So... So I've been thinking for some time, how, how you know, could we harness art and music to help people practice coherence and shift their states? Um, and then uh, Ali and Mark magically appeared at that moment, synchronization, synchronicity in the universe. And so, yeah, we decided to, to do that. So 
initially it was just videos that we were creating so the, the, the beautiful art that paces the breathing music that paces the breathing as well so different shapes abstract shapes that expand and contract um and then we created the, an app and then we thought well actually what we want to do is we because we're so passionate about art music let's invite artists and musicians to create the content so we we've done it ourselves first but now we've got an app so we launched the app in december and the app's got now we've got our 50th video in it um, so a third of all the videos are for, for breathwork, coherence breathwork. You can practice at different speeds, eight seconds, 10 seconds, or 12 seconds. So suits 95% of all people. There's another function, which is we call relax, which is just abstract art that beautifully evolves and lovely music, and you just kind of get lost in it. Um, then there's another function called elevate, which is to sort of uplift you if you're feeling a bit down. And all the videos are three or four minutes long. So the idea is that these are quick, they are very easy ways to shift your state, you know, on the move, anytime, any place. Um, they can help you with the coherence breath work if you want to do that. But equally, the other videos, you don't need to be even doing any breath work. Well, you can do any other type of breath work you want with them because they're not placing coherence. So that was the idea, yeah, is, is how can we harness the power of art and music in a simple way in an app that can help people manage their stress, relax more, and, you know, be a bit happier and healthier. Yeah, well, a beautiful mission to have, and uh, yeah. yeah, and great to bring the art and and and, and the and the the sound as well. Yeah, wonderful. And you've got a couple you're gonna you're gonna demo to us. Yeah, we'll definitely show. I don't know how much more time we got. But I can definitely show one. I'm, two, I'm, two I'm, like, I'm, so. I'm good if you are. Depends what your your schedule's like. If you got I'm, a few well, I'm cool. We'll show. Yeah, let's do if it. If we've got eight minutes, we play yeah, two. Let's do it. Back, yeah, back to back. Okay, yeah, so the first one's it. gonna first one's gonna pace in a ten second cycle. And the second one will actually pace in a 12 second cycle so people can see what, what feels most comfortable for them. And the idea is the shape will expand and contract and evolve. So you just breathe in as it expands, you breathe in, as it contracts, you breathe out. And the music as well is, is, is pacing that. So even if you want to close your eyes and just listen to the music, you'll hear the, the rhythm change, the chord change, which marks the, the point of the breath change as well. So um, let, let, let me big it up there. It'll be embarrassing if it doesn't work, but let me, uh, let me share a screen and we'll uh, get into it so hang on
Thank you for those. I hope everybody enjoyed them. Very beautiful. Um, I particularly like the bird sounds on the first one. That was quite nice. Yeah, bird sounds, bit of bit of, bit of water, bit of beach. Yeah. Can't go wrong. That second one's slightly more scary, but uh, oh, yeah. Nice? So we've got fifty of those videos in the app. Yeah, and uh, we release a brand new video every single Monday. So we, we've got these artistic collaborations, and the really cool thing is we've got artists who are collaborating with each other. They've never met each other. That's cool. So we we get an artist apply, and then we get a musician apply. And uh, we we curate and we match make them. Oh, that's so awesome. we've had people working together, you know, Mexico and Brazil and Portugal yeah. and Lithuania and a uh, couple of Aussies this week, actually, but they didn't know each other beforehand. So it's actually a really nice project because what's great is being able to, you know, champion those artists. And mm. also um, we like to boost their profile as well. So we, we yeah. talk about them, we interview them, that type of thing. So yeah, the app's out there, it's on Apple, it's on Android. Um, you get a free month's trial and then we've priced it cheaper than a cup of coffee. So $2.99 a month. Um, if you want to go for a, the year, it's $29.99 pounds that is. And then you can get it in any country in the world and it defaults to the local currency. So yeah, anyway, three Brilliant. months trial anyone can give it a go yeah give it a go again link will be down below so i highly yeah. encourage you to to check that out wonderful um mate it's been it's been a great catch-up is there anything else that we have not covered that you wanted to, to talk through i don't think so i mean i'd love to know how you get on with your 30 day challenge yes. so um yeah. that'd be great and if you want yeah. my kind of help with anything or advice with anything during the process let me know um but that's been great i really appreciate the opportunity to share bring some of the heart stuff to life yeah and uh yeah yeah it's a fascinating really field i really i feel as well like i know it's already big i just feel like it's going to really explode over the next few years it just like i say everything i'm seeing just keeps coming back to coherence 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 yeah. and you've got all the sexy hyperventilation you've got all the potato stuff and exactly. this just feels like the lovely thing that isn't doesn't stress me out at all it's just a really pleasant way of spending 20 minutes you know so uh, yeah, yeah yeah do all that good stuff and then yeah. do this as well but do, yeah. do this kind of throughout your day as yeah. sort of the normal you when you're not the normal yeah. yeah yeah and then the other stuff's like yeah it's like uh going to the gym and doing some biceps i don't know but yeah, yeah. this is the, the stuff you can do yeah throughout the day wonderful um gavin it's been an absolute pleasure mate uh until next time we'll see you uh and we'll see everybody on the the next breathcast thanks for watching everyone cheers yeah thanks cheers, mate cheers bye-bye Okay, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Gavin. And if you stuck the right way through to the end, you're the special one, two, three people maybe that stuck all the way through. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you're on iTunes or a Spotify listener, then maybe check out us on YouTube because you can see us talk and it's another way to connect with us. And if you're always watching us and you want to go out for a drive or clean the house, you can pop us on your podcast as well. Just a reminder, we've got a 30 day link for a discount here. So you've got till the 8th of 7th of August, uh, 2022 to pick up your very own version of this device which helps tell you if you're in coherence we pop it on our ear we connect it to the app we also look very cool and at the same time we get to con practice our breathing and our coherence and coherence breathing as you just heard may very well be the perfect breath time will tell i keep hearing wonderful things i think all breathing exercises have got different benefits pros and cons this one to me though is just a very easy practice you can slip into your, to your day and also just as a reminder become a breathwork ninja allow me to be your breathwork digital instructor we breathe too fast we breathe too shallow i said it at the start we've forgotten how to breathe the way nature intended but don't worry through my course through a five-week period i'll take you through the what the why and the how and we'll even have some breath breath fun maybe there's some breath puns in there as well maybe i can give you a bit of fresh air uh, that's the sort of thing that you might be expecting you might see in our breath course as well as the functional stuff and don't worry uh it's completely risk-free if you don't like it if uh, my puns are no good for you then uh it's a it's a money back guarantee so you can try it if you don't like it you email me no no questions asked um I hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you like that, check out another one or jump back over to the big take a deep breath one and uh, practice some free breathing exercises. And until next time, my friends, take a deep breath and I'll see you another time. Cheers.